how does endometriosis look in the body? On the left hand side of your screen, I've put up a diagram of a normal uterus. So you can see your uterus, it's labeled, so no problem. Uterus, you can see the mouth of the uterus called the cervix, you can see the vagina, you can see the ovaries and the fallopian tubes, right? So, like I said, if this tissue goes and sits somewhere outside the normal triangular uterine cavity, it will start to grow. It will start to respond to your hormones. Estrogen is a hormone in the body that builds up the lining of the endometrium. So, with estrogen, it will keep becoming thicker and thicker and thicker. But, unlike the uterine cavity, which has an outlet to the exterior through the vagina, the ovaries, they do not have any outlet. So this blood will keep collecting, keep collecting and become altered. It will become uh, sort of, I can call it decayed, if that is disintegrated and it will form a cyst, so it will form clumps. Now, we've all been injured at some point of time in our life. We've fallen from a bicycle, fallen somewhere, etc. Initially, when you have a scab, you realize that it bleeds for some time, then it secretes a little watery fluid, so that is called a serum, okay? Now, the property of that any injured tissue or any blood is that it has to become sticky so that it can fuse again. Now imagine this blood elsewhere where it's not supposed to be. So it will be sticky on the ovaries, sticky on the tubes, sticky on the side of the uterus, sticky in front of the uterus, behind the uterus, etc. Anything sticky is going to cause things to stick inside. If it sticks inside, it will form what we call in medical terms an adhesion. That is, the ovary will get stuck to the uterus, ovary could get stuck to the tube. The entire anatomy of the normal body, where the normal positioning is of the organs, the uterus, the tubes, the ovaries, etc., that is all going to be distorted. Because any organ is going to go and get stuck in an abnormal fashion or abnormal manner to different parts. That is the problem with endometriosis. So you can clearly see that they have on the right hand side of the diagram. You have endometriosis where there are these little adhesions, blood stuck collections that are there on the uterus outside, on the tubes, on the ovaries, etc. So this is basically what endometriosis looks like in the body. They'll have heavy bleeding, they'll be bleeding tremendously throughout their cycle, they'll be bleeding for a lot of days in their cycle. Normally around five to seven days is a normal length of a menstrual cycle. Some of them bleed for a fewer days, up to three days. Some women bleed for a little more, but that's okay. But here they'll have prolonged bleeding more than one week, more than 10 days. They'll be changing a lot of pads, more than three pads in a day. They'll be passing clots. Now, one thing I want everyone to understand is that passage of clots is not normal, right? So if you think that you're bleeding a little heavily and yeah, you're having an occasional clot, if you see a clot, that definitely means you're bleeding heavy. Because in a normal menstruating woman, there are no clots that are seen. On the pads, specifically no big clots. Secondly, the like I said, the name of this webinar is Blood, Sweat and Tears. So yes, endometriosis is very, very painful. Okay, and the pain is a pain that starts even sometimes before menstruation. So normally every woman I feel in her menstrual cycle has a little bit of discomfort during day one, day two of her menstrual cycle, which is not too severe, is not affecting her day-to-day -day activity, etc. But in endometriosis, the pain starts sometimes even one week before her menses. It's going to last throughout her menses and sometimes even beyond the menses, the pain continues. So it's a definitely a very painful condition. This pain might be only during menses or it might be even throughout the month intermittently. So that is called as chronic pelvic pain. Another very important thing that it causes and because I've explained how all the tissues of the body, that is the tubes, the uterus, the ovaries, etc. They go and get stuck. So the entire uterus, the tubes, the ovaries, that is the pelvic organs as we call it, they get stuck to each other. When they're stuck, when they're altered from their normal shape or size or positioning, any sort of penetrative activity in the vagina, that is specifically sexual intercourse, is going to be very, very painful. So they have a very deep which uh, is called as a deep dyspareunia in medical terms. That is a deep pain that they feel in the pelvis during sexual activity. Um, now I've drawn a diagram there, again, very self-explanatory because it's labeled. You can see the rectum, which is part of your intestines. You can see the uterus in the middle and you can see the urinary bladder in front. So the uterus is basically sandwiched between the urinary bladder and the rectum. 
So if the uterus goes and gets stuck onto the urinary bladder or the rectum or endometriosis, that is the blood that is spilled out of the uterus gets stuck on the bladder or the rectum, it's also going to affect these organs. So therefore, pain while passing urine might also be a symptom. Secondly, pain while passing stool, that is painful defecation, might also be a symptom. And very rarely, not very common, but it has been documented that if the endometriosis, it buries into the bladder, then even the lining of the bladder gets sometimes lined with endometrial tissue. This tissue, like we know, very importantly, is hormone responsive. It responds to estrogen, it responds to progesterone. So with every menstrual cycle, that tissue, whether it is in the rectum, whether it is in the bladder, whether it is in the uterus, is going to grow and shed. So very rarely you might have bleeding during urination, bleeding during defecation. And some patients might come with no complaints. They will be lucky in terms of the fact that they won't have pain, they won't have heavy bleeding, they won't have urinary or um, symptoms while passing stool. However, they'll come with infertility. They'll tell you that they've been trying to conceive since three years without any luck. But although it is not symptomatic, infertility is definitely a symptom. Why are they not being able to conceive? That is the question. And we know why. Because A, it has distorted the tubes. It has made them go and stick in abnormal places. It has distorted the ovaries. It has formed a cyst, etc. So that is why that we have to be careful. And the range of symptoms are quite varied. So when, if you go to a doctor and you're trying to explain your symptoms, you should be able to give a history regarding what is exactly happening to you. That will help your doctor come to a easier diagnosis of whether this really is endometriosis or not.